The Upper Cumberland in Tennessee, comprising part of the region named in 1750 for the Duke of Cumberland, is mountainous country dominated by the Eastern Highland Rim and the Cumberland Plateau. It is partly contained in the present counties of Cannon, Clay, Cumberland, DeKalb, Fentress, Jackson, Macon, Overton, Pickett, Putnam, Smith, Warren, White, and Van Buren. Throughout this rugged wilderness in the 18th century, explorers and long hunters such as Daniel Boone and David Crockett trafficked. The Cumberland River is the main waterway in the area and it provided the principal means of travel for the native Indians and the early settlers. Chickasaws, Creeks, Shawnees, Choctaws all hunted in the upper Cumberland region which abounded in game. Some Cherokees lived in the area. After the Revolutionary War, North Carolina granted parts of the Upper Cumberland to its soldiers as bounty lands, and they crossed the Appalachian Mountains as settlers. By 1797, communities were being established. Roads and turnpikes were soon connecting various areas of the region to each other and to the outside. The Wilderness Road from Granger County to Nashville, once a trading post known as French Lick, in 1787 to 1788, it passed through the Upper Cumberland Counties. An early north-south road connecting Danville, Kentucky and Huntsville, Alabama, known as the Kentucky Stock Road, passed through White Plains, Kentucky and Sparta, Tennessee. In 1777, North Carolina established Washington County, which included most of present-day Tennessee. On June 1, 1796, President Washington signed a bill making Tennessee the 16th state, thereby creating the first state to emerge out of territorial states. The name Tennessee is of Cherokee origin. The area was Indian country for generations, even centuries, before whites began establishing permanent settlements in the late 1760s 60s, and early 1770s. Although the Cherokees were the only tribe actually to reside in Tennessee, others claimed it as their hunting ground. As more and more settlers moved south and west, the Native American was being forced from his homeland. Although the Cherokees called it the Trail of Tears in their 700-mile trek to Indian Territory in the early 1800s, today known as Oklahoma, they were also joined by the Choctaws, the Chickasaws, the Creeks, and the Seminoles. These became known as the Five Civilized Tribes. On October 10, 1832, Edward Helton, spelled Hilton in, on some documents, filed a revolutionary war claim in White County, Tennessee. Although there is no direct connection at the time of this video history, Edward Helton was definitely a relative to our Helton family members. Edward stated in his claim that the following people of White County could testify as to his character and veracity in their belief of his services in the Revolutionary War. They were Thomas Walling, Isaac Taylor, Jeremiah Denton, Joseph Hurd, and the Reverend Ozias Denton, just to name a few. 
Everett had stated in his claim that he came to White County from Virginia about 1812. The 1830 census stated, uh, listed him as living alone with no children. His age was between 60 and 70 years of age at the time. His neighbors were the Clarks, the Hollands, and the McGowans. Could Edward have been the father to Riley Lee Helton? He was definitely related in some way. In 1809, Nancy Morris was born in White County, Tennessee. The 1880 census records listed her parents as being from North Carolina. She was first married to Joseph W. Clark. He was born about 1815. A daughter, Elizabeth, also known as Betty Ann, was born in 1830 or 31. Later, Nancy married James McGowan. Children from this marriage were Roxana, born in 1833, and a son, Ozias Denton, also known as O.D. He was born in 1835, also born in White County, Tennessee. Nancy's second husband, James, had died by January of 1841. Reasons were unknown. Sparta, Tennessee was founded in 1810, and it eventually became the county seat of White County. In 1810, the population of Sparta, Tennessee was 4,028 people. Pictured here is the White County Courthouse as it appears today. Riley Lee Helton, also known as Leroy, was born in 1811 in Sparta, White County, Tennessee. The 1880 census records listed his parents as being from Virginia. Parent, uh, names were unknown. Riley Lee's first marriage was to Elvira Lawson. Children from this marriage were William Riley, born November 30, 1834, James Houston Helton, born in 1836, Lawson, also known as Loss, was born in 1838, Lucinda was born in 1840, and Nancy C. born in 1842. All of the children were born in Sparta, Tennessee. William Riley Helton married his stepsister, Roxanna McGowan, on June 7, 1853. James Houston Helton married Mary Ann Moore of White County. Lawson Helton married Amanda Bolton. Lucinda Helton died in 1861 from rabies as a result of a bite from a skunk. Nancy C. died in 1860 of bilious fever. On November 16, 1845, Riley Lee and Nancy McGowan were married in Sparta. The wedding ceremony for Riley Lee and Nancy was performed by the Reverend Arnold Moss.
This photo was uh, taken near Sparta uh, with the beautiful rolling hills and countryside. The Caney Fork River in White County. The Heltons, the Clarks, the McGowans, and other relatives worked farmland close to the Caney Fork River. The Heltons were primarily farmers, and it's easy to see the reason why they settled in White County. Nancy Helton, Riley Lee's wife, died in December of 1882. According to Mary E. Brooks Helton, place of burial is unknown. Riley Lee Helton died on July 9, 1892 in Warren County, Tennessee. The Southern Standard newspaper of Warren County, Tennessee stated, Leroy Helton, old Warren County resident, died. He had been to Kentucky, Texas, and Missouri. The article listed the community of Dibrell, Tennessee. Children from Riley Lee and Nancy's marriage were Christopher Kitt Columbus Helton, born in Sparta in 1846, Edward Ned Helton, born in Sparta in October of 1849. Edward had married Elizabeth Goodson on October 29, 1868 in White County, Tennessee. Edward died on March 15, 1915 and is buried at Rose, Oklahoma, while Elizabeth died in February of 1935 and is also buried at Rose, Oklahoma. This is the farm of Pearl E. Helton, granddaughter of James Houston Helton, and great-granddaughter of Riley Lee Helton. Could this farm been part of Riley Lee's farm in the early days? This barn was on Frank Moore Helton's farm a brother to Pearl Helton and a grandson to James Houston Helton and a great-grandson of Riley Lee Helton. Both the farms of Pearl and Frank are located near Gum Springs in White County, Tennessee. On April 12, 1861, Confederate guns opened fire on Fort Sumter, South Carolina. The Civil War had begun. The drums of war had also begun. shared the incommunicable experience of war. We have felt, we still feel, the passion of life to its top. In our youths, our hearts were touched with fire. Oliver Wendell Holmes. Robert E. Lee was chosen to head the Confederate armies. The 16th Regiment of the Tennessee Volunteers 
was composed of volunteer companies from the counties of Warren, White, DeKalb, Coffee, Van Buren, Putnam, and Grundy. Warren County furnished four companies, White County one company, White and DeKalb com County one company, DeKalb one company, Coffee and Grundy one company, Van Buren one company, and Putnam one company. Felix Zollicoffer was chosen as General of the 16th Regiment of the Tennessee Volunteers. He was to be killed in battle. Two brothers who were also chosen as officers in the 16th Regiment were Colonel John Savage on the left and his brother Captain Lucian Savage. On May 21, 1861, James Houston Helton, his brother Lawson, and their stepbrother O.D. McGowan, along with other relatives, enlisted in the 16th Regiment of the Tennessee Volunteers at Camp Harris, Tennessee. Their other relatives were the Goodsons and the Clarks that also enlisted. Some would never see home again. Even their father, Riley Leroy Helton, enlisted in the Confederacy for a short term at the age of 50 years. The following is just, although the following is just one letter of a Civil War soldier to his wife and written so eloquently, it was surely the same thoughts on many of the men who left their homes never to return. A week before the Battle of Bull Run, Sullivan Ballou, a major in the 2nd Rhode Island Volunteers, wrote home to his wife in Smithfield. July the 14th, 1861, Washington, D.C. Dear Sarah, the indications are very strong that we shall move in a few days, perhaps tomorrow. And lest I should not be able to write you again, I feel impelled to write a few lines that may fall under your eye when I'm no more misgivings about or lack of confidence in the cause in which I am engaged, and my courage does not halt or falter. I know how American civilization now leans upon the triumph of the government, and how great a debt we owe to those who went before us through the blood and suffering of the revolution, and I am willing, perfectly willing, to lay down all my joys in this life to help maintain this government and to pay that debt. Sarah, my love for you is deathless. It seems to bind me with mighty cables that nothing but omnipotence can break. And yet my love of country comes over me like a strong wind and bears me irresistibly with all those chains to the battlefield. The memory of all the blissful moments I have enjoyed with you come crowding over me. And I feel most deeply grateful to God and you but I've enjoyed them for so long. The blissful moments I've enjoyed with you come crowding over me, and I feel most deeply grateful to God and you, 
that I've enjoyed them for so long. And how hard it is for me to give them up and burn to ashes the hopes of future years. When God willing, we might still have lived and loved together and see our boys grown up to honorable manhood around us. If I do not return, my dear Sarah, never forget how much I loved you, nor that when my last breath escapes me on the battlefield, it will whisper your name. Forgive my many faults and the many pains I have caused you. How thoughtless, how foolish I have sometimes been. But oh, Sarah, if the dead can come back to this earth and flit unseen around those they love, I shall always be with you in the brightest day and the darkest night. Always. Always. And when the soft breeze fans your cheek, it shall be my breath, or the cool air, your throbbing temple. It shall be my spirit passing by. Sarah, do not mourn me dead. Think I am gone, and wait for me, for we shall meet again. Sullivan Ballou was killed a week later at the first battle of Bull Run. J.M. Helton, Private, Company B, 16th Regiment of Tennessee Infantry, appears on Company Muster Roll of the organization named above for May 21st to August 31st, 1861. J.M. was James M. Helton, son of uh, Riley Lee Helton, and the oldest son. L.C. Helton, 1st Sergeant, Company G, 16th Regiment, Tennessee Infantry. Appears on Company Must Row of the organization named above for January and February 1863. L.C. was Lawson Helton, also known as Loss, and a brother to James M. and a half-brother to O.D. McGowan. O.D. McGowan, 1st Sergeant, Company G, 16th Regiment of Tennessee Infantry. Appears on Company Muster Roll of the organization named above for July and August 1862. O.D. McGowan was the son of Nancy McGowan from her previous marriage. He was also a half-brother to James and Lawson Helton. Christopher Helton, 8th Regiment of the Tennessee Cavalry. Name appears as signature to an oath of allegiance to the United States, subscribed and sworn to before H.B. Adams, Captain and Assistant Provost Marshal, General Department of the Cumberland at Nashville, Tennessee, February 21st, 1865. Place of residence, White County, Tennessee. Complexion was fair, hair is light, Eyes were gray, height 5 feet 6 inches, volunteered or constricted, constricted October 10, 1864, deserted November 15, 1864, oath administered February 21, 1865. Remarks, no family. Christopher Helton, also known as Kit, was a younger brother to James Houston Helton and Lawson Helton. He was also a half-brother to O.D. McGowan. Thirteenth Cavalry, Gore's Division, C.C. Helton, Private, Second Company A, Thirteenth Regiment, Tennessee Cavalry appears on company muster roll of the organization named above for June 30 through December 31st, 1864.
Under remarks, C.C. Helton was listed as a deserter. Leroy Helton, Private, Captain William G. Smith's Company, 25th Regiment of the Tennessee Infantry, age 50 years, appears on company muster in roll of the organization named above. Roll dated Camp Myers, October 1st, 1861. Muster in to date, July 26th, 1861. Enrolled when, July 26th, where, White County, by whom, A.B. Hardcastle, period, 12 months. Remarks, present for duty. Riley Lee Helton even served in the Confederacy during the Civil War for a short period of time. He was discharged at Tupelo, Mississippi. October 8, 1862, the Battle of Perryville, Kentucky took place. The Union Army was under General Buell with about 36,940 men, while the Confederacy was under General Braxton Bragg with about 16,000 men. The losses on both sides had been heavy and the battle for the number of men and the length of time engaged up to this time of the Civil War was the severest. The Union Army lost 4,211, the Confederacy 3,396, including killed, wounded, or missing in action. The 16th Regiment itself lost over 200 men. General Bragg withdrew his army in the morning after and retreated eventually to Knoxville, Tennessee. The Union Army buried their own dead, but left the Confederate dead, which lay upon the field for four days. They were then partially buried by the people of Perryville and vicinity. The ground was very hard and they were just merely covered up, and remained thus for six or eight weeks, 
when they were gathered up by the good people of the place and decently buried in one common graveyard. Those who died of wounds were buried in the cemeteries at Harrodsburg and Perryville. Before the engagement began, the frightened people of Perryville fled. On the day following the battle, they returned to behold a ghastly spectacle. A spectator at Perryville that day recalled the scene. I can remember seeing Dr. J.P. Hughes of Springfield at the old Jordan Peters home. In the yard under the trees, at a large table assisting in amputating limbs. And my, what a pile of arms and legs. Corner of the Confederate Cemetery at Perryville. This is from a photo taken in 1886. Battle of Perryville, Kentucky on October 8, 1862. Buried at Perryville. O.D. was a stepbrother to James and Lawson Helton. He was also a half-brother to Christopher Kitt and Edward Ned Helton. O.D. was born in 1835 in Tennessee. He was the son of Nancy Morris McGowan and James McGowan. His mother, Nancy, later married Riley Lee Helton. After O.D.'s father, James, had died causes unknown. O.D.'s sister Roxana eventually married William Riley Helton, their stepbrother. On the 4th of August, 1863, O.D.'s mother Nancy filed a deposition for purposes of obtaining from the Confederacy whatever may have been due her deceased son. James Houston Helton, captured near Chattanooga, Tennessee in September of 1863. James was first sent to military prison at Louisville, Kentucky. On October 9, 1863, two years to the day his second son was born, he was transferred to Camp Morton, Indianapolis, Indiana. After being taken prisoner, he had taken the oath of allegiance. James Houston Helton never made it out of prison. With very little clothing to keep warm from the cold winter nights and having to sleep in tents in below freezing weather, he died at Camp Morton on January 13, 1865 from inflammation of the lungs, just a couple of months before the war ended. He is buried at Green Lawn Cemetery, marker 1261 at Indianapolis. Mary Ann Moore Helton, James's wife and mother to Lysander James Charles, died January 29, 1917, and is buried at the Moore Helton Cemetery near Gum Springs in White County. Lawson Helton was captured and sent to a Yankee prisoner of war camp, surrounded by a body of water. One night he made his escape by swimming with two others to the main shore. He eventually made his way out west to New Mexico, then to Texas. He was more luckier than his brothers. Phineas Clark, a cousin of the Heltons, he lost a leg in battle and was unable to support his family. His wife left him. He became destitute and died young in his 30s.
This is Frank Moore Cub Helton and his wife Georgia Price Helton. Frank was the son of James Charles Helton and the grandson of James M. Houston Helton and great-grandson of Riley Lee Helton. He was born November 29, 1907 in White County, Tennessee and he died November 24, 1986 and is buried in White County, Tennessee. Christopher Columbus Helton was born in White County in 1846. He was the first son of Riley Lee and Nancy's marriage. He was a half-brother to William Riley, James M., and Lawson Helton, all having the same father but a different mother, Elvira Lawson being the mother to Riley's first three sons. Christopher also had two half-sisters, Lucinda, who was six years older, and Nancy C., who was four years older. In October of 1849, Christopher had a full-blooded baby brother. His name was Edward Helton, the second son of Riley Lee and Nancy's marriage. He was also born in White County. Christopher Helton was also a half-brother to O.D. McGowan. He was a half-brother to the Helton boys because they all had the same father. He was a half-brother to O.D. because the two of them had the same mother. Second, Christopher Columbus Helton went by several names during his lifetime. Born Christopher Columbus Helton, he was nicknamed Kit. He was also known as C.C. Helton and Lum Helton. On December 30th, 1868, at the age of 22, Kit married Elizabeth Pollard, his first wife, in DeKalb County, Tennessee. The 1870 Warren County, Tennessee census records showed Kit as a farm laborer, age 25, working at Isaac C. Jones Farm. Isaac was also 25 and his wife was named Mary Helton, age 23, probably a relative of Kit's. One child was born from the Kit Helton's first marriage. His name was Edward Vernon Helton. He was born August 18, 1874. He was also known as Big Ed. Big Ed had married Cora Dale Bowen. Big Ed died February 15, 1934, and is buried in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Cora Bowen was born September 13, 1875. She died November 12, 1957, and is also buried at Tulsa, Oklahoma. Another photo of Big Ed. The girl in the picture is unknown, possibly a daughter to Big Ed and Cora. On January 20th, 1878, Kit Helton married Martha Elizabeth Holland. On October 8th, 1893, Kit Helton married Ella Stewart of Arkansas. On July 7, 1898, Kit Helton was charged with bigamy by the state of Arkansas. The charges were dismissed by a grand jury. It was originally thought that Ella Stewart had filed the bigamy charge. As it turned out, it was her son, Brushy Stewart, from her previous marriage. Martha Elizabeth Holland was the mother to most of Kit Helton's children. Martha Elizabeth Holland. She and Kit were married in Warren County by Ulysses Van Hooser, Justice of the Peace, on January 20th, 1878. She was the mother to most of Kit's children. She was only 17 years old when she married Kit, and he was 32 years old. The children from Kit and Martha's marriage were James Edward Helton, born July 26, 1880, Sarah Francis, born October 2, 1881, Nancy Jane, born September 29, 1884, William Panatree, born June 22, 1886, John Jay, born May 28, 1888, 
Laura Ann, born March the 11th, 1890. Cleveland Columbus Helton, born October 2nd, 1891. Zanna Helton, born January 12th, 1895. And Jesse Jewell Helton, born December 8th, 1897. Martha Elizabeth Holland with her second husband, Robert Lee. It is not known whether Kit had divorced Martha or he just left her because later he was to marry Ella Stewart. Martha died on June 6, 1940 and is buried at Indianola, Pittsburgh County, Oklahoma. She was a mother to most of Kit's, help, uh, Kit's children. Kid Helton's troubles had started back as early as the Civil War when he was first listed, listed as a deserter. But on May 31, 1877 in White County, he was charged by the state for carrying a pistol. Reasons were game. Those charges were dismissed October 1, 1877. On July 7, 1898, the state of Arkansas charged Kid Helton with bigamy. Those charges were also dismissed. But on September 28, 1901, Christopher Kit Helton was charged with his most serious crime. He was charged with the murder of his wife. He was found guilty and executed February 7, 1902 in Van Buren, Arkansas. The newspaper article at the time was written as such, Helton's crime. Jealousy prompts him to shoot Robert O'Kelly and kill his own wife. Last Saturday morning, Kid Helton, who lives near Lancaster, a small town in Crawford County on the Frisco Road, shot Robert O'Kelly, a justice of the peace, inflicting a dangerous wound, and afterward returned home and killed his own wife. After shooting his wife, he, he made a search for Brush Stewart, a son of his wife by previous marriage, for the purpose of killing him. Failing to find Stewart, he attempted to escape, but was pursued by officers and a posse of enraged citizens and arrested. He was lodged in jail at Van Buren early Sunday morning. The Fort Smith Elevator newspaper in March of 1902 published the following article. Kid Helton hanged, the wife murderer meets death coolly, refuses to meet a minister. Shortly after 10 o'clock last Friday morning, Sheriff Pitcock of Crawford sprung the trap that carried out the mandate of the law in the case of Kid Helton, convicted of murdering his wife. The fall was nearly seven feet. Helton's neck was broken and he died almost instantly. The night before his execution, Helton slept well. In the morning, he ate a hearty breakfast. He had hopes of executive clemency but shortly after 8 o'clock, Sheriff Pitcock received a message from Governor Davis announcing that he would not interfere and that the execution must be carried out. The story is that Kid Helton was buried in a pauper's grave, that no one claimed him after he was executed. On the left is James Edward Helton oldest son of Kit Helton's second marriage to Martha Elizabeth Holland. He was born July 26, 1880. And on the right is his younger brother, Cleveland Columbus, born October 2, 1891. On the left is Nancy Jane Helton, born September 29, 1884. And on the right is her sister, Sarah Frances, born October 2nd, 1881. Sarah Frances Helton and her husband James Nance and their two daughters. William Panetree Helton, born June 22nd, 1886 and his wife, Francie Gibson.
On the left is Laura Ann Helton, born March 11, 1890, and her younger sister, Zanna, born January 12, 1895. Both are daughters of Kit Helton and Martha Elizabeth Holland. On the left is Jesse Jewell Helton, born December 8, 1897, the youngest son of Kit Helton. And on the right is his older brother, James Edward Helton, born July 26, 1880. Jesse Jewell Helton and his second wife, Bertha Gibson. His first wife had died, reasons unknown. Jesse Jewell was later to commit suicide. Cleveland Colum Columbus Helton, born October 2nd, 1891, and his first wife, Maddie Courtney. Seated in the wagon is James Edward Helton and his wife, Murdy Ozell. In the back of the wagon, from left to right, is John J. Helton, Cleveland Columbus Helton, and the man on the far right is unknown. On the left is Vernon Ray Helton, born May 25, 1930, in LaFleur County, Oklahoma. He was the son of Cleveland Columbus Helton and grandson of Christopher Columbus Helton. On the right is his younger brother, Paul Edward Helton, born February 11, 1939, in LaFleur County, Oklahoma. Ray Helton with his wife Olita DeWitt. They were married September 27, 1953. Paul Edward Helton and his wife Lavunia Mathis. They were married May the 13th, 1957. Paul Edward Helton, his wife, and their family. Pictured here is Carl David Helton, his wife, Dorothy Jean Parker, and their children. Carl David was a grandson of Jesse Jewell Helton, and a great-grandson of Christopher Columbus Helton. Edward Ned Helton was born in October of 1849 in White County, Tennessee. He was the second son of Riley Lee and Nancy Helton's marriage. Edward was the younger brother to Christopher Kit Helton and a half-brother to William Riley, James M. Helton, and Lawson Helton. He was also a half-brother to O.D. McGowan. Edward was just under 12 years of age when the Civil War broke out. As his older brothers and even his father, Riley Lee, went off to war, he was left to take care of the Helton farm. The story has been passed down that one day while he was doing his chores, some Yankees rode up, proceeded to beat Edward up and tie him to a tree while they took anything they could use and rode off, leaving him tied to the tree. He would have starved had a neighbor not found him in time.
On Thursday, October 29, 1868, Everett and Elizabeth Goodson applied for a marriage license in White County. Elizabeth was the daughter of Mike Goodson and Lucinda Latham. Mike was born in North Carolina and Lucinda was born in Tennessee. Lucinda, Elizabeth's mother, was once captured by a roving band of Indians, but managed to escape during the night, running all night, and then hiding in a hollow log until the next night when she made it home. The Goodsons had also served in the 16th Regiment of the Tennessee Volunteers. Both Edward and Elizabeth were reared in Tennessee and lived there until the year 1888 when they moved to Kentucky. They stayed in Kentucky until 1892 when they moved to Indian Territory, settling near Fort Gibson in the Cherokee Nation. They stayed there for four years, moving in 1896 to near Tahlequah, Oklahoma, the capital of the Cherokee country or nation. They lived there until 1906 when they moved to Mays County, where except for a short time they lived until their deaths. Edward Helton died March 6, 1915, and Elizabeth Goodson Helton, his wife, died in February of 1935. Both Edward and Elizabeth are buried in Rose, Oklahoma. Twelve children were born to Edward and Elizabeth, with only six of them reaching maturity. Their first son was named John Richmond Helton. He was born in 1869 near Sparta in Tennessee. He married Ida Hoskins in July of 1894, but he died in September of the same year, cause of death unknown. He is buried in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. No children were born from this short marriage. Roxanna, or Roxy, was the first daughter born to Edward and Elizabeth. She was born in 1871 near Sparta. She married John Hill in 1893. She died in September of 1947. Another daughter was born to Edward and Elizabeth was named Eliza Ann. She was born near Sparta on July 12, 1873. She married John B. Smith on September 8, 1897 in Fort Gibson. John B. Smith was struck in the head and killed by a wire stretcher when it slipped as he was working. He died March 14, 1935 and is buried at New Hope Cemetery in Fort Gibson. Eliza Ann died September 3, 1937, and is also buried at New Hope Cemetery in Fort Gibson. Mike Helton, another son, was born May 9, 1875, near Sparta, Tennessee. Mary Lou Helton, another daughter, was born May 6, 1877, near Sparta, Tennessee. She married John Gaither in 1894. She died on February 14, 1960. Nancy Leroy Helton, who went by the name of Lee, was another son of Edward and Elizabeth. He was born July 25, 1883, following his grandmother Nancy McGowan Helton's death in 1882. Therefore, he was named Nancy Leroy, after his grandfather and grandmother. He married Laura Adeline Woods, known as Aunt Addie, in December of 1905. He died on June 6, 1952, and his headstone is inscribed, inscribed with the name of Nancy Leroy Helton. He is buried with his parents at Rose, Oklahoma. James Riley Helton, also known as Uncle Jim, was born near Sparta on November 25, 1885. He married Essie Bowling in 1953. He died on April 3, 1970. Essie was born April 1, 1885 and died December 30, 1974. Both are buried at Rose, Oklahoma. No children were born from this marriage. J. O. Helton was born in 1879 and died in 1880. Francis Helton, born 1881, died in 1883. Rebecca Helton, born November 28, 1887. And Otha Helton, no other information was available. Standing in the back of the picture is Nancy Leroy Helton. Seated on the left is a Goodson, first name unknown, and on the right is James Riley Helton, Nancy Leroy's brother.
On the left is James Riley Helton. The man on the right is unidentified at this time. James Riley Helton and the sister to Nancy Leroy Helton's wife, Laura Adline Woods. Nancy Leroy Helton and his wife, Laura Adline Woods, this photo was taken in September of 1937, probably in Oklahoma. Mary Lou Helton and her brother James Riley Helton, son and daughter of Eber H. Helton and Elizabeth Goodson. Mary Lou married John Gaither. James Riley Helton and his wife, Essie Bowling. They were married June 8, 1953 in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. James Riley died April the 30th, 1970 and is buried at Rose, Oklahoma. Essie died December 30th, 1974 and is also buried at Rose, Oklahoma. No children were born from this marriage. James Riley, Uncle Jim Helton, standing in front of his farmhouse near Rose, Oklahoma, with his birthday cake. Uncle Jim didn't marry till he was almost 68 years of age. He is buried at Rose Cemetery, Rose, Oklahoma. James Riley's old house at Rose, Oklahoma. The original house was a log cabin, but it burned down. So this rock house was built in 1938. On the left front side of the house, just outside the front door, is a quarter moon over a star. It is pictured here just to the right of the tree on the left side of the photo. It is said that that was the stonemason's sign. A close-up of the quarter moon over the star. On the south side of the house, at the pitch of the roof, is this stone, what appears to be the letter H at the top, with a date, 1938, built by J. H. Helton and W. H. Raley. W. H. Raley was the stonemason that helped Uncle Jim build the house. The old barn at Uncle Jim's place, down by Snake Creek. On the far side of the barn is an Oklahoma license plate dated 1940, wedged up in the pitch of the roof. Snake Creek as it runs through the back side of Uncle Jim's farm at Rose, Oklahoma. From left to right is Charles Michael Helton, nephew of James Riley Helton. Standing next to him is James Riley Helton. And on the right, next to James Riley, is Charles Webster Helton. And on the right of him is his mother, Mary Edna Brooks. This photo was taken in July of 1959 at Uncle Jim's place in Rose, Oklahoma.
From left to right is Edward James Helton. Next to him is James Riley, Uncle Jim Helton. Next to Uncle Jim is Charles Webster Helton. And on the far right is Samuel Leslie Helton. And standing in front of Uncle Jim is Douglas Kevin Helton. Charles Webster is the father to the three sons in this photo with Uncle Jim. This photo was also taken July 1959 at Rose, Oklahoma. This map shows part of the Indian Territory in eastern Oklahoma. In the bottom right hand corner is the Going Snake Courthouse, while in the upper part of the map is the Delaware Courthouse. Over in the center, just south of Rose, Oklahoma, is the Saline Courthouse, just east of Locust Grove, Oklahoma. And just north of there is the Cherokee Orphan Asylum. Mike Helton was born on May 9, 1875 in White County, Tennessee. He moved with his parents to Tahlequah, Oklahoma in 1896. On January 12, 1902, he married Mary Edna Brooks in Tahlequah. Mary Edna Brooks was born on June 22, 1882 in Honey Grove, Texas. She was the oldest child of Hiram Victor Brooks II and Sarah Jane Albright, who were married on September 1, 1881 in Paris, Texas. Hiram Victor Brooks II, Mary Edna's father, was born in Canada on October 20, 1851. His father, Hiram, Hiram Victor Brooks I, was struck and killed by lightning in July of 1851, just four months before his son was born. Mike and Mary Helton lived near Tahlequah, Oklahoma the first six years they were married, but went to New Mexico, settling southwest of Tucumcari about November of 1907. They lived there for only nine months and returned to Oklahoma in 1908. Mike and Mary Helton had six children with five of them reaching maturity. Shown here are four of their children. The oldest on the far left in the back is Charles Webster Helton, born November 23, 1902 in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, Indian Territory, as Oklahoma was not a state as yet. Standing in front of him is his younger brother, Edward Clay Helton, born September 19, 1908, in Tahlequah, the state of Oklahoma. Standing behind Mike Helton on the far right is Pearl Helton, born September 7, 1904. She was also born Indian Territory, Oklahoma. And the baby on Mike's lap is Frances Elizabeth Helton, born May 12, 1912, in Oklahoma. In this photo, on the far left, is Edward Clay Helton. Standing in the rear is Eva Pearl Helton. On the far right is Charles Webster Helton. Next to Edward Clay Helton is Frances Elizabeth Helton, and the younger girl in front of Charles is Phoebe Grace, who was born July 21, 1914. Phoebe Grace only lived three years. She died September the 9th in 1917 of fever. Another daughter was born on February 6, 1922. Her name was Vernon Lee. On the left is Mary Edna Helton and her husband Mike Helton. Standing next to them in the front is Eliza Helton Smith and her husband John Smith. In the back is Charles Webster Helton, his brother Edward Helton, Francis Helton, a sister, and their cousins James and Rufus Smith and Elizabeth and Lovey Smith. 
This photo was taken on Christmas Day, 1921. Mike Helton and his wife, Mary Edna Brooks. You can tell the Heltons were farmers. Mike is always pictured in his coveralls, and you can tell by the size of his hands that he was a farm worker. Mike Helton with two of his favorite animals, Bob and Ribbon. On the left is Mike Helton. Next to him, behind him, is James Riley Helton. In front of James Riley is Mary Edna Brooks, Mike's wife. And on the right is Roxanna Helton Hill and Mary Lou, Aunt Lou Helton, married to John Gaither. The children on the porch on the left are believed to be Edward James Helton and Samuel Leslie Helton, sons of Charles Webster and Ann B. Helton, grandsons of Mike and Mary. This photo was taken Thanksgiving Day, 1945. This photo was taken at Fort Gibson, Oklahoma in 1946. On the left is Mike Helton, Standing behind him is Bill Lassiter, son-in-law, who was married to Eva Pearl Helton. In the middle is Mary Edna Brooks Helton, wife of Mike. Behind her is Lyndall Helton, wife of Edward C. Helton. And in the rear with a military hat on is Edward C. Helton, son of Mike and Mary. And the old gentleman with a cane is Hiram Victor Brooks II, father to Mary Edna Brooks Helton. This photo was taken in May of 1931. On the far left is James Riley Helton. Next to him is Charles Webster Helton. In the coveralls is Mike Helton. And on the far right is Edward Clay Helton. Edward Clay and Charles Webster are sons of Mike Helton in the coveralls. And James Riley Helton on the far left is the brother to Mike Helton. So in this photo are two brothers with two brothers. This photo of Mike and Mary Helton was taken in 1947. Mary Edna Brooks Helton, Mike Helton's wife, was responsible for a lot of the Helton family history as well as the Brookses. She kept diaries and wrote books all through the years about the Helton and the Brookses and the Albrights. Much of the family history is credited to her. From left to right is Mike Helton. In the middle is Link Johnson, a close family friend of Mike Helton. And on the far right is Edward Clay Helton, Mike Helton's son. Mike Helton died on June 27, 1951, and is buried at Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. Link Johnson committed suicide about a year after his wife Millie had died. This photo was taken in February of 1970. Mary Edna Brooks Helton died in California on October 30, 1975. Both she and Mike are buried in the Cherokee National Cemetery in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. On the left, from left to right, are the five surviving children of Mike and Mary Helton. On the left was Verna Lee Helton, born February 6, 1922. She married Lyman Blanton. Next to her is Frances Elizabeth Helton, born May 12, 1912. She married Oliver Beaver. 
In the middle is Edward Clay Helton, born September 19, 1908. He was first married to Lindell Marie Littlepage. Then later he was married to Rosella Hill. Next to him is Eva Pearl Helton, born September the 7th, 1904, and she was married to Bill Lassiter. And on the far right is Charles Webster Helton, born November 23rd, 1902, and he was married to Ann Bingham Crum. This photo was taken in June of 1951. Although this photo is a little bit out of focus, it is of Edward Clay Helton, son of Mike and Mary Helton, when he was in his early teens. He was born September the 19th, 1908, in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. This photo of Edward was taken in 1920, when he was about 12 years old. This photo was taken of Edward Clay and two of his sisters, Frances Elizabeth and Verna Lee. This photo was taken in 1927 when Edward was about 19 years old, shown here with his favorite horse, Lady. In November of 1908, Mike and Mary Helton and their children moved to the Grand River uh, farmland near Fort Gibson, where they stayed for two years. In 1910, they moved back near Tahlequah, farming there two years, and then moving to a farm in Mays County, where Edward started his school at a country school named Smith Chapel. Again, the family moved this time to Bryan County in 1916. They lived there for four years, and in 1920, moved to a farm near Fort Gibson. They lived there for the next eight years. Everett completed the eighth grade at a country school called Cedar Mount, finished in May of 1923. He remained home with his parents most of the time, working on various jobs in various states until 1931. On December 7, 1931, Everett joined the U.S. Army and was assigned to Company B, 18th Field Artillery at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. His older brother, Charles Webster Helton, had enlisted in the Army in 1925. This photo of Everett Clay was taken at Camp Forest, Tennessee in 1942. This photo was also taken in Tennessee in 1942. This photo was taken with Edward and his father, Mike Helton, in 1943. Edward was first married to Linda Marie Littlepage. They were married on uh, April 18, 1942. She died on July 1, 1947, as a result from an auto accident in Lawton, Oklahoma. No children were born from this marriage. January 24, 1948, Everett married Rosella Ann Hill, also known as Aunt Rosella. Rosella was the daughter of Jesse Frank Hill and Nora May Hillary. She was born in Apache, Oklahoma. Everett and Rosella moved to Wichita Falls, Texas, while maintaining a home in Yanish, Oklahoma. They also had an old farm from the Helton family located at Rose, Oklahoma. This farm had been passed down from James Riley Helton. Rosella died in Wichita Falls on November 29, 1984, and is buried in Apache, Apache Oklahoma. Children were born from 
Edward and Rosella's marriage. This article read, the two sons of Mr. and Mrs. Mike Helton Fort Gibson have a long record of service with the Army. First Sergeant E.C. Helton left, joined the Army in 1931. He is now with the field artillery at Camp Forest, Tennessee. He formerly trained at Fort Sill. His brother, Master Sergeant C.W. Helton, on the right, has been in the Army for 17 years. He is now somewhere in North Africa with the Engineer Corps in which he is a Master Mechanic. He trained at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Edward Clay Helton retired from the Armory at Fort Seal, Oklahoma and was released from duty on April 21, 1953. Edward Clay Helton and his sister Eva Pearl. Edward Clay Helton with his four nephews. On the left is Samuel Leslie Helton. Behind Ed is Douglas Kevin Helton. Next to Ed on the right is Charles Michael Helton. And to the far right is Edward James Helton. They are the sons of Charles Webster Helton, who is the oldest brother to Edward Clay Helton. In this photo on the far left is Ann Bingham Crum Helton and her four sons with Edward Clay Helton and Edward Clay's sister, Verna Lee Helton. To many of his friends, Edward Clay Helton was known as Pop, which stood for Professor of Philosophy. In 1989, I wrote a poem and entitled it, This Uncle of Mine. The professor of philosophy, better known as Pop, but to me, to me, he's my uncle and he is Tops. My father's brother, his name is Ed, I'll tell you a little about the life he's led. Born in Oklahoma in 1908, following the year of Indian Territory, becoming a state. His mother was Mary, his father was Mike. He was one of six that came into their life. He served his country for 22 years. He remembers the good times as well as the tears. He returned to farming in his beloved state, working his land to the evening late. Running away from home, he took me in. He helped my life get straight again. I didn't stay long for the first time, but kept going back to see this uncle of mine. With a twinkle in his eye, he's got a story to tell. Sometimes a true one, sometimes a tale. As the years have gone, he has slowed up a bit. He's still full of determination and full of grit. Now here we are in the year of 89. I still love to see this uncle of mine. I'm ahead of the summer, out on the prairie. I'm ahead of the summer on. <coughs> When along comes stranger, travel all along the bossy out stranger, he'd have a bite to eat. Stranger he dismounted, then he took himself to see. First he helped himself the bacon and the beans, and he began to tuddle the sights that he had seen. He'd been the wide world over, he'd sailed the seven seas. There wasn't many things the stranger hadn't seen. He'd been to the South Sea Islands. Where the girls were skirts and grass, he, he drove a herd of camels through the counter pass. He scouted for the army, chasing the Ronimo. He rode with old Diaz, went down to Mexico. He saw the might of Missouri when his bank was brimming full. He rode the president's rape on the friend of the bull. 
He crossed the white Sahara with all the teeth and dust. He crossed the trader horn with the low spell of dust. He boasted and he bragged about how he'd been around. We thought he was just some greenhorn who just escaped from town. Then said Bud to the stranger who was sitting by his side. Said Bud to the stranger, oh, stranger, can you ride? Broncos, he travel about the land. He broke the wildest ones that brought those shine. Well, away he went, shorty, and a trail on the run. He picked up the lasso and he caught the zebra done. Now, zebra was an outlaw with one to leave alone. He brought the summer pride and he busted up her bones. He served notice to us all, they never would be tamed. He found that every rider that died to play his game. Well, a stranger looked him over in a casual sort of way. He said, I can ride the Bronco, and I'm just the day. He allowed his cash was all invested in the railroad stocks and bonds. They bet his horse and saddle, he could ride the zebra for none. When he bet his horse and saddle, we all put out a hoop. We had visions of it, went back, to leave him there on the hook. When he his horse and saddle, we all put out a hoop. We had visions of it, went back, to leave him there on the hook. Well, a stranger sent the saddle, and he searched his heart and soul. When he swung up on old Z-Bar, said, Boy, you can let him go. Old Z-Bar left the earth, calling for the sky. But the stranger set the saddle, much to our surprise. Old old Z-Bar knew his trade, and he went to work to fat. Stranger set the saddle and he fanned him with his ass. With both of the old Z but bucked and bowled, the dust commenced to stir. But stranger stuck the saddle just like a cup of butter. Old Z but bucked and bowled, it twisted like a nail. But stranger set the saddle and he raked him on the stage of brick. I perched her on the corral, we all commenced to cheer. We never saw the dragon and all our cowboy ears. He flanked him in the shoulders, he hooked him in the shoulders, and flanked him as he whirls. A shorty on the corral, he's checking all the world. From the whales he bawled, we knew his pride was hurt. But stranger set the saddle, and he belled him with his quirt. Old Zippa stopped him bawling, we know he's shot his boat. The stranger reined him over, just gentle as a coat. Now the boss offered him a job. But came in the bucket string, but he said he is on his way to London, so he had business with the king. We handed up for bet, and he bid us all good day, and rode across the prairie upon his merry way. Now he's proper the biggest liar that ever went unhung, but the one thing I am sure, he was a riding son of a gun. I say it. <laughs> they were traded in his mules and his horses years ago for this Chevy pickup. Today the pickup has well over 300,000 miles and still runs, but Ed is unable to drive it anymore as he has had a stroke a few years back and is legally blind. Just last month, on September 19, 1993, he celebrated his 85th birthday. Oklahoma as it appeared in 1900. The shaded area from the midsection west was known as Oklahoma Territory. The light color area on the right was known as Indian Territory, consisting of the Cherokee Nation, the Creek Nation, the Choctaw Nation, and the Ch Chickasaw Nation. Charles Webster Helton was the first child of Mike and Mary Helton. He was born November 23, 1902 near Tahlequah, Oklahoma, Indian Territory, as Oklahoma was not a state until November of 1907. Charles, who went by the name of Charlie, was named after James Houston Helton's son, James Charles. James Houston Helton was a Civil War veteran that was captured and died in the Union Prisoner of War Camp in Indianapolis, Indiana during the Civil War. Mike and Mary and their son, Charlie, grew up around Tahlequah until he was five years old. He had grown up on various farms as his family had moved around. He started his school at Cedar Mount in Wagner County in 1909 a joint district with Muscogee County at that time. 
He finished the eighth grade in Bryan County. In 1920, he moved with his family to a farm on the Arkansas River in Muscogee County. He farmed there until entering the U.S. Army on December 21, 1925. This photo was taken around 1906 or 1907. Charlie and his younger sister, Eva Pearl. Eva Pearl was born on September 7, 1904, also Indian Territory, Oklahoma. Charlie entered the U.S. Army on December 21, 1925. He started his military career at Camp Normal near San Antonio, Texas, being assigned to Company B, 3rd Motor Repair Battalion, IM Depot. He was transferred to Company B, 4th Battalion in June of 1926 and was sent to Jeffersonville, Indiana in the Quartermaster Corps. This photo of Charlie was taken in 1926 when he was about 24 years of age. While stationed at Jeffersonville, Charlie met and married Ann Bingham Crum on August the 2nd, 1931. Ann Bingham Crum was the daughter of Charles Dolph Crum and Clara Bell Kane. Charles Dolph Crum was born April 20th, 1868 in LaGrange, Kentucky, and Clara Bell Kane was born May 1st, 1874 in Jeffersonville. Ann Bingham Crum is seated on the front row in the center. The, the Charles Dolph Crum and his wife had nine children. The nine children of Charles Dolph Crum and Clara Bell Kane Crum were from left to right Sidney Jean Crum, born September 16, 1915, Ann Bingham Crum, born June 6, 1914. Andrew Jackson Crum, November 27, 1911. Virginia West, October 15, 1909. Eleanor Dolph, August 16, 1907. Clara Bell Kane Crum, March 8, 1904. Eunice Irwin, July 18, 1900. Helen Louise, June 4, 1898. And Grace Elizabeth, November 23, 1895. All of the children were born in Jeffersonville, Indiana, Clark County. Ann Bingham Crum with one of her little friends. Clara Bell Kane Crum and two of her daughters, Ann Bingham on the left and Sidney Jean on the right. Ann Bingham Crum on the right and her sister Sidney Jean. Clara Bell Kane Crum died on January 19, 1925, when Ann was only about 11 years old. This photo, believed to be taken the day of the funeral services, shows Ann on the front with her hands on her lap, with some of her brothers and sisters and her father, Charles Dolph Crum. Charles Dolph Crum died December 13, 1958. And he and Clara Bell came both are buried in the Eastern Cemetery in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Clara Bell Kane, 
born May the 1st, 1874 in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Died January 19th, 1925 in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Her father was William West Kane and her mother was Grace Darling Pawson. William West Kane and Grace Darling Pawson, parents of Clarabelle Kane. He was born January 3rd, 1849 and died on December the 3rd, 1937. Grace was born July the 4th, 1850 and died June the 12th, 1925. Grace Elizabeth Crum, the oldest of the Crum children, was born November 23rd, 1895. She's shown here in her wedding dress. She married Alfred M. Grunther, who was later to become a famous general during World War II. He was known as Ike's right-hand man. Grace died on May 18, 1979, and is buried in Washington, D.C. General Grunther died June 1, 1982, and is also buried in Washington. He became the youngest four-star general in the history of the U.S. Army. Alfred M. Grunther, featured on the cover of This Week magazine of the Indianapolis Star, December 16, 1951. left to right we have Sydney Jean Crum, her sister Ann Bingham Crum, Helen Louise Crum, and on the far right is Virginia West Crum. Ann Bingham Crum at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Charles W. Helton on the left with a couple of friends of his at Schofield Barracks in Hawaii, 1945. Master Sergeant Charles W. Helton on the left served in North Africa during World War II he also served in other parts of the world. After World War II, he was transferred to Fort Sam Houston, San Antonio, Texas, where he remained until his retirement from the Army in July of 1954. On December 20th, 1955, he received full military honors for having served his country for 30 years active and inactive service. here are just a few of the campaign medals that Master Sergeant Charles W. Helton earned while serving the U.S. Army. This medal was the Good Conduct Medal. This one was the American Campaign Medal for 1941 to 1945. medal was the European African Middle East medal. This medal on the upper right was the American Defense Medal. This medal is the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal. This medal was the National Defense Medal.
medal in the center was the Legion of Merit medal for exceptionally meritorious conduct in the North African campaign. Master Sergeant Charles W. Helton was presented the Legion of Merit in December of 1943. read the Legion of Merit awarded Master Sergeant Charles W. Helton for exceptionally meritorious conduct in the North African campaign was presented him yesterday by Major Clinton E. John, commanding officer of reception station number nine, Jefferson Barracks, where he is on duty. Sergeant Helton joined the Army 18 years ago at Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. Shown at presentation ceremonies preceding a retreat are from left Major John, Major Roy Stockwell, Executive Officer, and Master Sergeant Charles W. Helton. After serving in the U.S. Army, Charles W. Helton served another 10 years with the U.S. government and civil service at Lackland Air Force Base, San Antonio. Altogether, he served four years to his country. He retired in San Antonio. Shown here is his, Charles Webster Helton and his brother, Edward Clay Helton. Charles Webster Helton died on December 7, 1985, just one month after celebrating his 83rd birthday. He was given a full military honor burial service at Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery in San Antonio, Texas. Anne Bingham Crum Helton died February 6, 1992 in the military hospital at Fort Sam Houston. She is also buried at the Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery in San Antonio next to her husband, Charles Webster Helton. Nine children were born to Charles Webster and Ann Bingham Crum Helton, with eight of them shown here in the photo. The oldest, Mary Lynn, was born March 31, 1933, in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Mildred Louise was born December 22, 1934, in O.K., Oklahoma. Edward James Helton was born June 16, 1937, in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Joanne Helton was born April 27, 1939, at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Charles Michael Helton was born June 17, 1940, at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Samuel Leslie Helton was born June 7, 1941, at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Patricia Jean Helton was born August 29, 1943, at Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. Douglas Kevin Helton was born May 12, 1947, at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. The youngest child, Letha D. Helton, was born June 25, 1949, at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Presenting their father with a tie at Christmas in 1948 at Fort Sam Houston are from left to right Mildred Louise, uh, Charles Michael, Joanne, Douglas Kevin, Patricia Jean, Samuel Leslie, Edward James, and Mary Lynn. This photo was featured in a Fort Sam Houston newspaper in 1951 showing Ann Bingham Crum Helton and four of her children. On the left is Douglas Kevin. Next to him is Patricia Jean. The baby holding the doll is Letha D, and on the right is Joanne Helton.
Charlie and Ann Helton with their nine children. This photo was taken after he had retired from the U.S. Army. Standing next to Charles Webster is Edward James Helton. Next is Charles Michael Helton, Samuel Leslie Helton, and Douglas Kevin. Seated next to Ann is Mary Lynn Helton, Mildred Louise Helton, Joanne Helton, Patricia Jean Helton, and Letha D. Helton. The five daughters of Charlie and Ann, from left to right is Letha, Patsy, Joanne, Millie, and Sally. Charlie Helton in the center with his brother Edward Clay, Uncle Ed, and Charlie's four sons. On the left is Samuel Leslie, Sam, Mike Helton, Jim Helton, and Doug Helton. Ann Helton and her nine children, the day of Charles W. Helton's services. From left to right is Mike, Joanne, Millie, Sally, Ann, Letha, Patsy, Doug, Sam, and Jim.
My dearest mother, you are the best. Through the years, you've stood life's test. A mother of nine, you're always there, lending an ear, showing you care. Never asking or taking, but always giving. You've made our lives well worth living. Like my brothers and sisters, I don't tell you enough how much I love you and all that stuff. So one more time, please lend an ear so I can tell you I love you, my mother dear.
This photo history video was made in my makeshift studio at home. The history primarily follows the family bloodlines of Riley Lee Helton down to the Charles Webster Helton family. There simply is not enough videotape or time to follow each of the individual families that came from the Riley Lee and Nancy Morris Helton family tree. The viewer will have to excuse any misinformation of dates, names, or places if you disagree. I went by the information that I had available at the time. 